Hi, today I'm making this video. Um, as you can see, I have two modems here. These are both DSL modems. They're Motorola's. These are the ones typically used by AT&T, uh, for example, with Uverse. Now, what a lot of people notice with these modems is that they get tremendously hot. And besides that, at a certain point, once they get to a certain temperature, they will stop processing data, which requires you to unplug the modem, let it cool off, and then wait and plug it back up. Now, that's very frustrating. In fact, uh, with the modem, uh, you, this one is the one I had been using. Uh, you can see a cable coming off there. I'll explain why that's there in a minute. But what I found was with these modems, I tried several, is I would run them, I use the internet quite heavily, and I would have to restart maybe once, sometimes up to three times a day whenever it was getting really hot. And the problem isn't that the internal components can't deal with the data flow. That's not the issue. The issue is design flaw of the case. Now, why do we say design flaw of the case? Well, if you look at your unit in the end, and you can't really see too well because of lighting, but uh, if you look through these slots, which are supposed to be ventilation slots, uh, that you can see plastic inside it. Uh, see if I can get it any closer. Anyway, not really. Um, also on the bottom, these are supposed to be also ventilation slots. And again, you see plastic and the same on the other end. Now there's no other openings on the unit for airflow and there's no way, no fan, nothing built in. So after months of frustration, I decided, you know what, there has to be a better way. So this is a really good do-it-yourself project when you're really fed up with it and you don't feel like going out and shelling out a uh, hundred some odd dollars for a surfboard modem or a Netgear DSL modem, which in the end, perhaps, could do the same thing anyway. So what do you do? Well, you end up with a unit that looks like this. Almost the only thing different you see is the cable coming out of the bottom, the USB cable. So what do you do? Well, let me show you. First, at the bottom here, I've already removed the two rubber feet, and you'll take out the two Phillips head screws that are in place there holding the unit together. Next part is to disassemble. Now you can use a flathead screwdriver, a metal ruler, or in my case, I have strong fingernails, so you just press it in, and then the unit comes completely apart. So now, whenever I mention the issue of design, if you look, you can see here, there's plastic fins that actually come out and then make a right angle, which actually slows down the airflow tremendously. And then on the bottom here, there were plastic pieces, as you could see on the other one I showed you. So what I did is with an X-Acto knife, I cut off of the bottom only these pieces. So this is the bottom piece, cut the bottoms out so you have good airflow. And then I left these in place for a reason and, and I'll show you why later. Uh, anyway, so now you have more unrestricted airflow to the bottom of the chip board. Now, why is there still work that you have to do for this to function? Well, the problem isn't on this side of the chip board per se, it's on the other side. So let me show you. Take out this one screw that holds it all together on inside. Put that apart. Now, if you notice on the back, the back is uh, tilt in. So what you have to do is you have to grab it from the front, lift it up, and pull it out. Comes right off. Now the problem here is this processor. This gets is what gets so hot inside the unit. Now. The design of the DSL modem is such that you can see the remnants of it here. They put a plastic piece that extends from the top case all the way down and touches the processor, which in theory should be a heat sink. But in reality, since it's plastic, it doesn't conduct heat very well at all. So you have this overheating issue. Now, what did I do? You can see here, I've cut off all the little tabs that I could get to with an X-Acto knife on both sides, right? 
Next, I found a, looked for and found a laptop case fan and adhered it with three layers of double-sided foam adhesive tape. Now you need the adhesive tape to get it up high enough to get past this little section here. And it, again, this is a slim one. This is a five volt, which is typical of a laptop. And the design of these is really perfect for the situation because it pulls air from this side, which I've butted up against there. I cut out those, those uh, angle pieces, those tabs. So it pulls air from the outside and pushes it inside right onto the processor. Then the next step before you adhere it into place, once you make sure it fits, is you get a USB cable like this one and you leave this end intact. This is what you need and you cut off the other end. And then I soldered the red and the black of the fan to the red and the black of the USB. Now, why do we know that that's what you need to solder? Well, this is the wiring diagram for a USB cable. The black is your ground and your red is the five volt positive. So that's exactly what you need to run the case fan. The next thing I did was I cut out a one of the tabs completely here so that my power cable, USB power cable, could go through and power the fan. That's it. Then you just reassemble the unit, remembering that this tilts in. So you put this into place, tilt it in. Put in the screw, put this back together, line it up, and it snaps back together, put in your two Phillips screws, put the plastic feet or rubber feet back on, plug it in, plug this into a USB power supply, and you're good to go.